Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be finally resolving one of the bigger mysteries here on planet Earth. The mystery that's sometimes referred to as the polar drift. The mystery that became very apparent a few decades ago when the scientists realized that the North Pole, North Magnetic Pole of our planet, was actually drifting a lot faster than it should be drifting. As a matter of fact, in the last few years it moved quite a lot more than in many previous decades before, especially approximately 100 years or so. And this beautiful video from the ESA, from the uh, European Space Agency, even shows us or helps us visualize how the North Magnetic Pole has changed since the 1840s. So as you can see in the beginning it wasn't really that much, but then as we approach the modern decades it really sort of accelerates and starts moving really fast. With the mystery of course being why. Now one of the recent studies from possibly a year or so ago was able to show us and kind of explain to us that it wasn't really because of some kind of a shift, a dramatic shift inside the planet, and it wasn't because the magnetic poles are about to switch like it was implied a few years ago. It was actually because one of the areas on the planet was weakening, and the weakening of the field in one area and possibly strengthening in the other area was essentially shifting the pole itself. But it was not really able to answer the question of what exactly was weakening the field in those areas, what's causing the shift to begin with. And that's of course until now. And unfortunately the reasons have something to do with your favorite quotation marks topic, the climate change. And here it's also of course important to remember that the idea of climate change is an extremely complex topic. And it also relates to topics that is usually not covered by media in general. It's not just about the idea of losing uh, coastlines or suddenly oceans becoming more deep. It's a lot more complex than that and it involves a lot more things that we still don't understand. And as this recent study shows us, one of these unusual effects of the climate change has basically been the melting of a lot of different ice caps and a lot of different glaciers on the planet. Something that has been very well documented and actually extremely well summarized in another video that should be on the channel sometime soon, or might have been already out if you're watching this in the future, but also is related to the idea of observing the planet from different angles, from different perspectives, and observing it for many different years. And we know today that glaciers are melting all over the place. This is a documented evidence, this is a fact. And what's more is that they're melting at extremely fast pace. With some regions, obviously regions where there are a lot of glaciers and a lot of ice, being affected a lot more. But what effect does this have on the planet? Well obviously it introduces water, but it also introduces something that nobody has thought about before. It seems to introduce an overall change in the load on the surface of the planet. It basically reshifts the amount of pressure the planet receives. Because as you can probably imagine, all of this ice is really heavy and it presses down on the planet quite a lot. But if the size disappears, well, the planetary surface starts to expand a little bit, while possibly the water that's introduced maybe creates the pressure somewhere else. Now, a lot of this is more or less not really well understood yet, and a lot of this the scientists are still trying to learn about, observe and simulate, but when the scientists in this particular study decided to take all of the factors into consideration and then remove them one by one, comparing them to the changes in the polar drift, there was one factor that was almost directly connected to the polar drift as it happened in the last few decades. That factor was correlated with an accelerated ice melting over major glacial areas and seemed to be directly responsible for driving the polar drift since the 1990s. But the way that the paper is structured and the way that the scientists present this is not to scare anyone. It's just to show us that there is a lot for us to learn and that we can actually learn about the motion of the North Magnetic Pole by studying how the load on the planet changed over time. And these changes are extremely important because they essentially redistribute the mass on the entire planet. And since we live on a spinning object, as you redistribute the mass from one location to the other, it of course affects how the planet is going to be spinning. It basically shifts the axis just a little bit, but enough for it to influence the magnetic north pole. In other words, all of these effects seem to be affecting the axis of our planet, which is of course something that needs to be investigated, especially because we know that during the last glaciation period, or the last ice age as it's known, the large part of the North Europe, for example, and also North America, was covered in huge chunks of ice. 
and this would also distribute the mass of the planet very differently, thus possibly affecting how the planet was spinning. But what effects would this have on the planet and what effects would this have on the actual climate is a question that is extremely interesting but we don't really have an answer to right now. But the scientists in this paper do suggest that this whole change happened in the last few decades alone and so these effects can clearly change very quickly and can actually possibly affect the planet very quickly as well. With an implication being that it might also affect the so-called true polar wonder which basically does refer to the axis of the rotation itself, which we do think changes in time, but we just didn't think it would be so quick. This is something that might happen over thousands of years, but according to this paper, it seems to be also affected by what's happening with the melting of ice. And since we know that since the 90s, ice did indeed disappear from the planet, thus changing the load on the planet, the implication here is not just that the north magnetic pole is changing, the implication is that the axis of the planet is changing. And that sounds um, a bit unnerving. I'm not entirely sure how this is going to affect the climate on the planet and how this is going to affect everything else. But one thing to add here is that we're not just talking about melting ice and the idea of glaciers melting. The study itself mostly studies what's known as the terrestrial water storage, TWS. And generally TWS does refer to a very wide variety of phenomena, including underground water that's actually invisible to us. But humans have also been using that water as well. We have been sort of redistributing underground deposits as well through various use, through various agriculture use. And because of this, the mass of the water on the planet has been shifting all over the place, in some regions more so than others. And so altogether, all this evidence suggests that through various means, through various activities, humans seem to be also sort of changing the way that the planet spins. That's both mind-blowing and a little bit scary with the biggest contributors being either agriculture on massive proportions where the water is just being redistributed to another region and of course the overall warming of certain regions of the planet most likely due to various greenhouse gases that essentially resulted in many of these glaciers disappearing and thus releasing a lot of water decreasing the total load in those regions but the change of axis the degree itself is estimated to be extremely tiny so not something we're going to notice Unless, of course, it starts to increase even more. Nevertheless, though, because we're still sort of doing the same thing we were doing about 10 years ago, chances are it's going to be increasing more and more. Now, what effect this is going to have? Well, right now, nobody really knows. Although, let's hope that it's nothing too scary. Let's hope that it doesn't lead to some dramatic shift in climate once again. And since we know that a lot of these changes have already affected the currents on the planet, changing them to the point where some currents are completely different from what they used to be, specifically affecting these formations you see right here known as the ocean eddies and these are usually responsible for basically distributing the water on the planet we can only assume that the entire planet is going to transform quite dramatically in the next decade the movement of the water is going to be different the amount of water in certain regions is going to be different and because of this the pressure from the surface in those regions is also going to be different as well and all of this will probably shift the axis even more at least to some extent but because of the complexity of all of this, it's almost impossible to predict where all of this is going to lead. I mean, to some extent it's kind of fascinating, but in some other sense it's also kind of terrifying. The terrifying part of course being the unknown. But nevertheless, it's happening and, well, at the moment, nobody has a solution to any of this, nobody has an explanation to how to change any of this, at least a very practical explanation, and most importantly nobody knows how the planet will transform in the next decade. But it's extremely important to be aware of all of this and to always be aware of what changes all of this might bring. But anyway, cool discovery, very interesting paper, definitely an exciting explanation to the mystery of the North Magnetic Pole Drift, which also helps us understand that the chances for the magnetic flip or the North Pole and the South Pole flip is very low. But the chances for something a little bit more dramatic are pretty high right now. But anyway, on that note, once we learn something else, I'll make sure to follow this up with another video. But until then, thank you for watching, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else, maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Either way, stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.